Hey guys, welcome to BBM Pulsers. In this video, I'm gonna show you my latest um, charging circuit for BBM Pulsar 5.5B as well as 6B. Here I have the components that will go into it and I'll talk about them uh, separately. Uh, so before, let's uh, jump into the circuit and talk about it a little bit. So uh, it starts with a 15 amp thermal fuse, a 120 volt DC comes in here and then we'll go to one uh, 20 amp on off switch then it will go into the resistor and after that it will go into the transformers that are connected in series these are the microwave transformers you will need two of them uh, the secondary on the microwave transformers is used for charging the capacitor bank and um, to make a DC out of AC, I use two diodes. These are 1000 amp, uh, 1000 volt, 100 amp diodes. Um, as you know, uh, this setup is using a strip wire coil and um, I'm using a 400 amp thyristor as well to discharge into the coil. Along with the pulse capacitor, this is a 1350 microfarad 1100 volt uh, pulse capacitor which is this component here that's how it looks like you can get them um, eBay I have a guy um, on the eBay who's selling them for like around $80 or, or so with uh, like $50 shipping or something so it will cost you under uh, $200 to get one of these. And I've tested them, they work very well. They'll output 3.5 Tesla, no problem. So thermal switch. Uh, this is the thermal switch. That's how it looks like. As the component goes here. Uh, on off switch, you can get that from Home Depot. And I recommend getting a 20 amp. They sell 15 and 20 amp kind resistor so this is a 200 watt or 250 watt one and a half ohm resistor they look like this um, this is the part number for it right here unfortunately uh, DigiKey doesn't stock them anymore well it does I just bought everything they had um, and we're gonna need to find another uh, replacement for this part or um, another supplier guys I don't know where to find it yet so help me out in that um, now 12 volt AC DC power supply you don't need strong one you just need uh, something like this which will output uh, less than one amp 12 volt this is for a low voltage circuit let's see here thyristor so this is the um, 400 amp used component here that's how they look like uh, when they're being used um, I've tested <clears throat> new ones and used ones and it seems like um, they work just fine they don't really go out and uh, if you search them on eBay you'll be able to find them for around um, $35, $40 for a used one. Like this, this guy sells him. It is SKE um, for $22. And he's got a bunch of them. And you can get a new one for around $100. So, transformers. Um, microwave transformers. They come in different sizes, um, they output slightly different power. Although the voltage, even though they're smaller or larger in size, the voltage seems to be the uh, same on the secondary winding. <clears throat> so um, get the larger ones. These are the larger ones, they come from microwaves uh, like a 1000 watt microwave or 1100 or even 1200 watt microwaves. 
Uh, another thing about transformers is their standby current. I have um, discovered that on a standby current usually they consume a lot of current which is not normal for a standard transformer but for microwave transformer they can get away with that because they're using an internal fan to cool them off all the time so this part this transformer is actually like 250 300 watt transformer but they're using it for a thousand watt setup and it works well for them because they're constantly cooling it off with a fan and that's what we're gonna do in our setup we have a fan which we're gonna use uh, this is a 15 watt 120 millimeter fan and it's constantly running to keep everything cool uh, what's gonna be heating up is the transformers and the resistor which is this component it will be heating up and you do need to remove the heat out of it this setup as I show you guys uses very little components a um, couple other components that I want to talk about is uh, diodes uh, I use 100 amp 1000 volt diodes and I connect them in a series and I epoxy it this way it's easier to mount it inside the case and they won't short anywhere so here's here's the diodes connected in a series um, and that's how it all connects now let me show you a couple things here with the transformers uh, if you're using this circuit for charging a 1500 volt capacitor then you're fine you don't need to tap into the secondary as you can see here i have tapped into the secondary winding and i removed about 25 percent of the winding i'm not using this 25 percent because if i don't uh, remove it my um, end up i'm gonna end up with about 1500 volt on a on a capacitor bank and because my capacitor here is 1100 volt i have to remove some of the windings to um to slow down the charging as uh, charging um cycle and also uh, by removing some of the windings i am i'm gonna limit my highest output to about 1300 volt and um and the circuit i have uh will will trigger at 1100 volt and if it doesn't trigger then this uh, transformers won't be able to raise anything anywhere higher than 1300 volts and um, this usually uh, capacitors can hold another 10 to 15 percent over its rated voltage so if it's rated 1100 volt it can hold another 110 to 150 volt on the top of it before it's gonna start um, making noise inside it's gonna be start shorting in so you don't want that to happen and you really don't want to overcharge them so uh, later on I'm gonna show you how uh, I trigger the thyristor to prevent overcharging in a uh, it's gonna be all in a low voltage side of the circuit uh, through the gate here uh, what else guys so um, that's about it seems pretty pretty straightforward and simple circuit and uh, I've put together about three or four units already and they seems to work well so I'd like to share that with you um, if you like it find it useful give me a thumbs up share subscribe and I'll see you in the next one